Chapter 9 Ha ha ha! Daryl nearly laughed out loud upon hearing the price of the bill. This William was a real fool. None of them knew anything about the wine that was ordered, except for Daryl. It was a Romanée Conti, which retail price was set at over one million bucks, and more than 30 bottles were distributed around the dining hall. Are you fucking kidding me? William panicked. He stood up and said to the waiter, Over 300 of us Lindens ate an amount of over 30 million bucks. The average cost per person is 100,000 bucks then? All right, get your manager to see me. The two waiters looked at each other helplessly. They had no choice but to call their manager over. The manager was a 30-year-old young man who wore a neat suit. Do you intend to continue operating your hotel? William stepped forward and shouted at the manager while pointing at him. An average cost of 100000 per person. Believe it or not, I'm going to report you to the Consumers Association. The manager was not the slightest bit worried and merely stood there. Excuse me, sir. The wine you ordered was a limited edition Romanée Conti. Only 800 bottles are manufactured per year internationally, and its market price is 1.63 million per bottle. Sir, we gave you a discount for ordering over 30 bottles. William immediately flew into a rage and grabbed onto the manager's collar. It's a limited edition wine and you guys have over 30 bottles here? Who the fuck wants to order this bottle of wine anyway? The manager put on a fake smile. Being a manager for about five to six years, he has seen many famous and important people around Donghai City. However, it was his first time seeing an incapable person acting like he was rich. The manager steadied his emotions. Kind sir, let me be clear about three things. Firstly, you said that you wanted the best wine, and we have the security camera footage as proof. Secondly, the wine we provide is certified authentic. I'm not sure why my boss has so many bottles of limited edition wines either. Lastly, please be respectful. Thud. At the end of his sentence, ten or so burly men barged in from the door. They wore black short sleeve shirts, showing off their huge tattoos. They were the Oriental Pearl Hotel's security guards. As Donghai City's most luxurious hotel, no one dared to cause trouble on the premises. Everyone knew that the Oriental Pearl's boss came from a rough background. Nobody would dare to be ignorant and cause trouble here. Leading them was a man wearing a Chinese tunic suit, holding a cane in his hand. The man was none other than the boss of Oriental Pearl, Wayne Woodall. Wayne was dressed in an old-fashioned manner. Some might even mistake him for a 70-year-old man. In truth, he was just 30 years old. Naturally, when Wayne brought in these burly men, the Lindens panicked and went up to apologize. William's face sweated bullets. That was Wayne Woodall, the boss of the Oriental Pearl Hotel, one of the earliest to dabble in rough business in Donghai City. Upon seeing his boss, the manager spoke again with confidence. You Lindens are truly a second-class clan. You said it yourself that you wanted the best wine, and now you're refusing to pay? No, no, exclaimed William as he was taken aback. We'll pay, uh, we'll pay. He looked at Grandmother Linden as he said that. Where could he find over 30 million bucks? If the bill was not paid, William would probably be leaving the place on a stretcher. Mr. Woodall. Grandmother Linden could not sit still any longer, and under some people's assistance, went up to Wayne and bowed. Age-wise, Grandmother Linden was way older than Wayne, but in terms of status, she could not afford to offend a man like him. The Linden clan made a mistake. Grandmother Linden apologized with a bow. My grandson is young and reckless, and I apologize on his behalf. We will pay the bill immediately. Upon seeing Granny bowing, the children of the Linden clan felt a sense of unease. What could they have done? No one asked William to do what he did, wanting to drink the most expensive wine. 
Some of the younger members of the Linden clan looked up that bottle of wine online, and indeed it was over a million a bottle. William apologized profusely as well after seeing his granny doing so. The entire Linden clan hurriedly tried to put in some good words. Only Daryl stood up and walked out, not because of the situation, but rather he was old friends with Wayne. When Wayne was just starting his business, he had visited the Darby clan to negotiate a deal. During that time, he had no money nor power, and none of the Darbys wanted to receive him. At the time, Daryl was merely 14 years old, but he felt that Wayne carried himself extraordinarily well. He decided to invest 300000 bucks in him, which made Wayne teared up in gratitude. In truth, it was more of a sponsor rather than an investment, for Daryl did not ask for any shares. This happened so many years ago that he had almost forgotten about it. He could not believe that he would meet Wayne again on this very day, having started a successful business and becoming the boss of Oriental Pearl Hotel. He definitely did not make a mistake by investing in him at that time. Daryl hunched forward and tried to sneak out of the place, not wanting to be recognized by him. Hey there, friend, hang on, exclaimed Wayne as he walked toward Daryl. The Lindens were full of rage. Was Daryl mad? A simple apology and payment were all that was needed to settle this matter, but he decided to escape instead? Lily, what's going on in your husband's mind? Escaping? A few ladies of the Linden clan said. Yeah, everyone advised you to divorce him quickly, and yet you didn't listen. Now he's trying to escape. Mr. Wayne would surely be mad, and us Lindens would have to suffer the consequences. The ladies shouted while pointing at Lily. Meanwhile, Lily could only bite her lip. Any sense of pride left in her was lost upon Daryl's attempt at escaping. She would rather stick her head into a hole on the ground at that point. Mr. Wayne, William called out and quickly walked toward him, pointing at Daryl. Mr. Wayne, please don't be mad. This guy is our clan's live-in son-in-law. He's always been a useless piece of trash. Him wanting to escape is none of our clan's business. We'll pay the bill right now. Fuck off! Wayne roared as he pointed at William. Wayne's booming voice frightened William and sent shivers down his spine. He dared not utter a sound and stood there in a daze. Wayne was in disbelief. He could not believe that in his lifetime would he meet this young man again. Seven years ago, he lacked the funds to start his business. No one was willing to help him. After all, he was a ruffian back then. Only the Darby clan's second young master, a boy only 14 years of age, had sponsored him a sum of money. Daryl gave him 300000 without asking for anything in return. Daryl had Wayne's eternal gratitude, and he would never forget what he had done for him. If not for this sum of money, Wayne would have been living on the streets a long time ago. In recent years after his entrepreneurship success, Wayne had people inquire about this young man. He only learned that this man had been banished by the Darbys, his whereabouts unknown. Today, Wayne merely saw Daryl's back but it was enough for him to recognize who he was. Second young master, is it you? There was a slight tremble in Wayne's voice. It was hard to imagine that a man who had seen much of life would exercise caution like a kid. Damn it, there was no way to hide. Daryl gritted his teeth and turned around to face Wayne. Thump. In an instant, Wayne was completely stupefied and knelt on the ground. I've finally found you. I've been looking for you for three whole years. I'm eternally grateful for your benevolence. Wayne exclaimed with excitement, tears streaming down his face. Every person in Oriental Pearl Hotel dropped their jaws immediately. Astonishing! Utterly astonishing! A boss, whose net worth was in the billions, was kneeling on the ground, vehemently excited like a child. Daryl simply stood there calmly, without any signs of emotion. He showed no sign of happiness, nor sadness. What is the meaning of this? Mr. Wayne, what's going on? Did you fall? Daryl quickly bent over and picked him up, all the while winking repeatedly at him. 
What kind of man was Wayne? Upon seeing Daryl's action, he immediately understood that Daryl did not want to reveal his true identity. I wasn't standing properly, Wayne smoothly replied and heaved a sigh of relief. I'm sorry, I must have mistaken you for someone else. Whew. Upon hearing those words, members of the Linden clan let out a sigh of relief as well. Turned out, Wayne simply was not standing properly. That was right. How would a piece of trash be acquainted with Mr. Wayne? Listen to me, said Grandmother Linden eventually, while gazing around the dining hall. This meal cost over 38 million bucks. William won't be paying this sum alone, she said. William's face lit up with joy upon hearing Granny's words. Truly, she treated him best. The meal will cost an average of 100,000 bucks per person. All of you shall use your own money for it, she continued. The crowd nodded one after another. Even though the Lindens were considered a second-class clan, 100,000 bucks was still not a big deal to them. However, two people among the crowd that had a sour look on their faces. Naturally, they were Lily and Samantha. Their company met with some challenges recently, and they had just resolved the five million issue. As such, their savings had been emptied a few days ago. Lily, you don't look so good. Don't tell me you don't even have enough money to split the bill, laughed William. He knew, of course, that Lily was broke, and he purposefully said it loudly to embarrass her. I... All eyes were on her, and Lily could feel her face blushing red. After a while, only did she answer, I... I didn't bring my bank card. Chapter 10 <laughs> Forgotten to bring your bank card? What a splendid reason! William laughed loudly and looked at Samantha. Aunt Samantha, did you forget to bring yours, too? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone could not hold in their laughter. A young girl blurted, Daryl must have forgotten his card, too. This family came here to eat a free meal. Lily bit her lips hard as she felt helpless. It was at this moment that Daryl stepped forward. I brought my card. It's just that... Before Daryl could finish his sentence, William snatched his card over and passed it to the waiter. Come, let's see whether this card has even 300,000 bucks in it. Lily stomped her feet anxiously, thinking how his card would have 300,000 when she only gave him a daily allowance of 200 bucks. He would be making a fool out of himself. Lily could see that everyone around was holding in their laughter, waiting to laugh at him being a joke. At this moment, nobody noticed Yvonne standing up slowly. Her beautiful face was full of shock. I didn't see it wrongly, right? Amethyst Banks' black card? exclaimed Yvonne. Mocking laughter filled the hall initially, but now it turned as silent as the grave. Yvonne's words seemingly turned everyone into stone. This bank card was remarkably pretty. It was all black, laced in gold, and had a diamond engraved on it. Two words were beautifully written on the bottom right corner of the bank card. Daryl Darby. A black card from Amethyst Bank? How was that possible? William's platinum card needed to have at least 10 million savings in it. Moving up the tier was the diamond card. That required a hundred million in savings. Moving further up was the VIP card, whose cardholder's savings should not be lesser than 500 million. The highest ranking card was the black card. That would ask for a total of one billion savings. Perhaps in the whole of Donghai City, there would not be more than three of these cards. No one at the venue, including Wayne, could possess it. Lily and Samantha were both stunned. They could not say a single word. This, this is just a sticker for bank cards, right? Someone among the crowd suddenly blurted out. At this moment, everyone was relieved. It must be some kind of sticker. Such an uncouth-looking person could not possibly own a black card. 
Ha, 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 devil, you're one disgusting man, laughed William loudly. Don't mind that you're poor, yet you try to act like a wealthy person. Daryl did not say anything at all and just smiled. Lily came forward and saw the waiter had taken the card away to make payment. Daryl, get rid of that sticker when we get home. Aren't you shameful? Also, does, does your card have sufficient money in it? Lily could not help but ask softly. It's enough. I save the allowance you gave me every day, including my savings from before. It's enough, Daryl said. <laughs> Although Daryl's voice was soft, everyone heard him and they laughed again. After paying the bill, everyone in the Linden clan left. Wayne discreetly held Daryl's arm and brought him into his car. Second young master, I finally meet you again. Second young master, I finally meet you again. Wayne was excited, speaking to Daryl as he drove. Where are you taking me? I'm bringing you to meet a few people. They are very eager to see you. Wayne's hands were trembling. You must come with me. Fine, fine, fine. I'll go with you. Just drive carefully, assured Daryl. Son of a bitch. Why was this guy so excited? He could not even hold the steering wheel properly. The car sped away and arrived at a bar's entrance. Donghai City's most luxurious bar, the Moonlit River Bar. It could be assumed that the minimum spending for two in this bar for a night would be 10,000 bucks. Many luxurious cars were parked at the entrance of Moonlit River Bar. Those who came here more or less have some financial capability. What are we doing at a place like this? Asked Daryl as he got down the car. He disliked such places as he found them too noisy. To give you a surprise, Wayne beamed. Second young master, the boss of Moonlit River Bar is an old acquaintance of yours, Samson Facey. Samson Facey? Oh, Daryl remembered now. Initially, he was just a general worker employed by the Darby clan. Daryl thought that he had the brains and had promoted him to a managerial position. After working for two years and earning a sum of money, he then left to start his own business. Daryl did not expect that Samson would open Moonlit River Bar. He did not let Daryl down. Second young master, please head inside first and wait for me in room number 888, said Wayne as he bowed. Samson and I will prepare a surprise for you, which you'll definitely love. Wayne left before waiting for Daryl to respond. Daryl sighed and went into the moonlit river bar. No wonder the bar was famous. Even the ushers at the entrance were beauties. Daryl smiled as he entered, and deafening loud music could be heard. It was extremely lively in the bar. Crowds of men and women were swaying their bodies to the music on the dance floor. Daryl felt old. This type of place did not suit him. Oh, am I seeing correctly? Isn't this useless Daryl? Some said from behind suddenly. Dale subconsciously turned his head around and was stunned. Behind him was a gorgeous woman, wearing a pair of skin-tight jeans and looking seductively sexy. It was Jade. What should you call me? Shouldn't you call me Daddy? said Daryl smilingly. You? Jade bit her lips. She was extremely happy today as she had come to negotiate a deal with a big client. If she could sign a contract with this client, she would earn at least one million in commission. Hence, she had invited her potential client here today, preparing to have a few drinks and get the contract signed. She did not expect to meet Daryl here. Even you, with your uncouth look, can manage to come to a place like this? Jade said as she looked at Daryl from head to toe. Saving two hundred bucks a day over a year just to spend it all here once. Is it worth it? <laughs> nope, Daryl laughed. I just want to know, when will you finally call me Daddy? At this moment, a burly man stood up and walked to Jade's side and asked, Miss Jade, who is this? Why does he talk like an idiot? Do you need me to teach him a lesson? Jade laughed and said, 
Daryl, do you know who this man is beside me? He is Moonlit River Bar's head of security. If I ask him to throw you out, would you cry? There was no mistake. This burly man was her client, Harry Crocker. Head of security was just a title. Those who understood could tell that he was a bouncer. After all, a place like this would attract many troublemakers. Harry was famous in Donghai City, having around 20 to 30 men under him just to look after this place. Skinny bastard, did you hear that? Fuck out here yourself, said Harry in contempt as he took a step forward. What was it with these ushers, letting an uncouth-looking man into here? This guy dressed in bargain goods probably did not even earn more than 2000 on his monthly salary, yet he dared to enter a place like this? Daryl just smiled. He did not bother what Harry said and went straight for room 888. All the rooms here were glass rooms. Room 888 was positioned right in the center, and it could be seen from the outside that room 888 was dazzling like a palace. Stop right there! Harry shouted as he saw Daryl walking into room 888. He concluded that Daryl must be here to cause trouble. All equipment in room 888 were gold-plated, and the cost to reserve and use this room was 800000 per hour. Daryl had already sat down inside, holding up a cup of tea, preparing to drink it. Ha 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 ha! It was over for Daryl this time! Jade felt joyous in her heart. Was Daryl stupid? A private room like that was not for a useless son-in-law like him to sit in. Jade and Harry had a chat previously, and he mentioned the room had not been used for half a year already. Harry had a nominal kinship with the boss here as his godfather and son. Despite that, even he dared not enter room 888. Are you deaf? Can't you hear me? Harry shouted as he strode forward and grabbed Daryl by his collar. Ha ha ha! Jade, the goddess is here. If I beat this punk's ass, it'll show how mighty I am, right? Thought Harry while he called out. Immediately, twenty over burly men rushed into room 888. They were all bouncers at the moonlit river bar. What's wrong, Harry? The burly men asked. Harry turned to look at Jade and laughed. Miss Jade, how should I deal with this guy? Jade looked at Daryl. He still had an indifferent look on his face. Seeing him like this made her mad. She stomped her feet with her heels and said, Make him call me mommy, then throw him out. 